One of my enduring memories is as a an altar server in the Roman Catholic Church in Portobello called St. John's. Um, I, I, I was serving Mass on a Sunday and um, on one occasion I turned around to look at the, uh, the congregation and I could see that half the congregation <laughs> was in civilian clothes, human beings, families, children, and then the other half were in uniform. But the uniform defined not just the uniform of the British soldiers, sailors, airmen, but the uniform of the Polish army. And what is more, they were there all praying in the one language, using one language which was the language of Latin, not English. So I thought, my God, what a vision of Europe this is. But it was really Europe, because it was not just the citizens of Edinburgh, it was the citizens of Europe. And I thought how wonderful it was that they were using the lingua franca of universities, of academe, and the, the world of the arts, the language of Latin. They were praying in Latin. So if I link the Italian community in Scotland with the Polish community, I think I'm defining the real heart and soul of what Scotland is now in terms of a European culture. So I'm grateful for my honorary doctorate. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for the fact that uh, near to Wrocław is a small town called Sokolowsko. And in that area, I could feel 100% at home as a European. So, somehow or another, I've got to find a way, I've got to plan a way in which I can reinforce the cultural links between Scotland and Poland, the cultural links between Scotland and Italy. Because, you know, at one time in the 16th century, there were 40,000 Scots in Poland, 40,000. And the first mayor, Lord Mayor, if you like, of Warsaw was a Scot. <laughs> And I cannot forget that the Hanseatic League existed and there was trade, natural trade, between the Baltic and the east coast ports of Scotland. There's much work to be done. And I want the DeMarco archive to be represented in the library in the archives of Marek Mutar's wonderful uh, conversion of what was the, the main bus depot in, in Wrocław. It's now a place where you can feel 
that your history as a citizen of Wrocław is meaningful and important to their concept of the history of Europe in the 21st century. All the memories that I have belong to a wider concept of art. They're about the friendship that must exist between human beings, no matter what their national identity is. Art is the language which crosses every frontier. And I can see that my life was blessed by the way in which through all my friends, most of whom are part of the history of art in countries like Poland and Italy and Romania, are one family. And that family defines the cultural heritage which we should be proud of. It's the cultural heritage which has made sense of the Scottish way of life. In the end, I'm grateful to the university and the art academy in, in, in Wrocław and to all the art centers in Europe, to the universities and their galleries and their theaters. Because in many ways, when I'm thinking of culture and art, I'm also thinking of education. Joseph Boyce said, when I said to him, what is the nature of your art? And he said, emphatically, my art is my teaching. <laughs> Meaning that he was an artist teacher. And I do believe, therefore, that the very heart of all education should be con the concept of the art academy. Whether it's Central St. Martin's or uh, uh, the Royal Academy of Music or whether it's Edinburgh College of Art, whether it's uh, it, it, the Academy in, in Wrocław, it should be the place where you discover the fact that you were born to be an artist. Thank you.